those late summer nights and lazy mornings. Seriously, pr pretty lazy. So lazy. So lazy. Like, do something. <laughs> They're almost over. <laughs> Instead, <laughs> early bedtimes and waking up to an alarm is on the horizon. The founder of Engage Kids, Patty Maxwell, is here to share some tips on how to get your kids ready for those school schedules without losing sleep or your patience. Because we were just talking about this. The waking up at 930 in the morning, like, what, do you have nothing to do? To, they don't. They yeah, don't which is unfortunate. 930 in the morning is the time my kids woke up today. Yep, a lot of kids are. In fact, my son will probably sleep until about one today. Oh, my <laughs> God. Do you remember the days? No, I, don't, I never did that. Oh, I did. Oh, high school Kelly loved herself some sleep. She still does. I just don't get it. <laughs> uh, and I want to know why bedtime has become so anxiety ridden. Because yeah. this used to be a very easy thing. They used to be, you know, pooped out. Out, and now the unlimited energy is ramping up. Is it just the summer? Summertime, and then we don't have much energy left either, right? Like sure. by the end so, of the day, yeah, we're, we're like... spent. And so <laughs> we start to get a little fussy. They get more fussy. They get crazy. Right. We get crazy. Everything ends up exploding. I yeah. will say, yeah, there there is a little bit of like laxness when it comes to yes. getting to bed on time. And we have, for a lot of people, about two, maybe a little less than two weeks left until school. So this is actually the perfect time to it start is. putting in those bedtimes. Literally. I mean, my daughter starts two weeks from today. And and that's why I was trying to think of time frame. You really do want to start kind of peeling things back about two weeks before school starts because you don't want to go from like a 930 bedtime to all of a sudden a 730 bedtime. They're yeah. going to lay there in bed and get more wired and get crazier and make you even more. Nervous. Right. And think of more oh. questions to ask. <laughs> yes. Uh, I will say I. <laughs> I have Googled this before and every answer is different. So obviously I know that there's no hard and fast rule, but how much time and what's the amount of sleep for these kids? Yeah. Because I know it differs by age as well. I was going to say that's the big thing. It depends on the age, right? So like the kids three to six year olds, those are around like 10 to 14 hours, again, depending on the child. Then we go to the next chunk of age and you know, most kids like your daughter's age, she should really be sleeping eight to 10 hours at least. At least. It's even closer to 10 to 12. Even a teenager should be sleeping at least eight hours. And if you think they have to get up at five or six in the morning. Yeah, they're, they're not getting until midnight. Like, yeah. mm. that's why they're always tuckered out. Yes. How do we get this started? Because my thing is, let's do like rip it off like a band aid and you're up tomorrow at 7 a.m. And let's see how we all do. Um, but, yeah, yeah. Little you hate yourself, obviously. Yes. Well, you know, because I think they need to be tired in order to go to bed on time. Yeah, you're right. So if we if we get them tired that one day, does that work? Okay. And then we can. <laughs> You could certainly <laughs> wing it and see what happens. I think maybe in some households it could, but that's not necessarily what we would suggest. Okay, good. All right, um, cool. Probably best practice would be about 10 to 15 minutes for two to three nights in a row and then keep going from there. So if you're used to 9.30, now we're gonna do 9.15. Do that for two or three days and then it goes to nine and then it goes to 8.45 right. and then till you are eventually at the time frame that you want it to be at because just that little bit of time will help you on both ends. And that's the other piece is you have to also, you can't let them sleep in until 9.30 anymore. We have to start peeling it back there in the morning as yeah. well and yeah. you know, cranky kids, they're gonna be cranky, it's not gonna be easy. We're going to be cranky as well, but it will save you that first morning of school instead of just rah, everyone yeah. waking oh up. Oh my God. And getting the first day of school pictures whenever they're up for the first time. <laughs> I know. Oh my Mom, God. Leave me alone. Uh, exactly. Who are you? So how can we make bedtime fun? Because I do know that I have, I, I feel like as a parent, especially a working parent, I just am trying to get this done as fast as yeah. possible. And I know that's not the way. It becomes like a last job of the day almost. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. And it really has. And that's where we're, you know, we're told we're supposed to be reading to our kids. We're supposed to be snuggling with our kids. It's kind of the last thing we really want to do with our kids. Yeah. But, you know, think if, if you're being put to bed and someone is yelling at you, get in bed, that's it, we're done. <laughs> you know, is that going to be a nice way to fall asleep and then to wake up in the morning? No. So. Um, I know we've talked about these in the past, the spots of emotions, but this is a nice, calm, quiet activity that you could try. It doesn't have to necessarily be these, but this is the love spot, and I know the kids always love to be loved. So this is something where you can, there's like a little baby one, and then there's like the mommy or daddy one, and you can hide these and make it kind of a game. So if you're going in to brush your teeth, okay, first we have to brush your teeth, then we can find the spot. 
Then we're gonna go into your bedroom first. You have to put on your jammies and climb in bed. And then we'll quietly sneak out of bed and we will find our smot and then bring them back into bed with us. I love so that. So call it quiet, calm, right? We don't wanna be running, we don't wanna be screaming. If we start getting loud, then we have to stop playing our, our quiet game. I see. So yeah, oh, I love really a volume limit. Add it in. And you brought a, a larger oh, one with you too. This I is do. fun. So this is the gigantic one. And this is one where, you know, you, it'd be harder to, to hide, but this is one that you guys could snuggle with then in bed. And you know, you have like the grandparent, you have the parent, and then you have the baby spot. And I know it sounds silly, but these work too for the older kids as well, right? Because, you know, your middle schoolers, they are very anxious about going back to school. Same with the high schoolers. You don't necessarily have to play the hide and seek game, but you know what? If they're kind of grouchy or cranky, which they are usually at those ages, you know, you could just say, I put a little spot, a little love spot under your pillow, love you, and sneak oh, out, you know? Really great so stuff. you know it's always there. All right, Patty, thank you thank for this, you Patty. Thank you so much. And if you need some help, parent, some parenting help, Engage Kids offers some in-home and school services as well. We're going to have more information on our website at kdka.com slash talkpittsburgh.